now. Okay. Yay. And uh, by the way, we've been putting the um, meetups up on our um, uh, YouTube channel. So if you go to the on the on the YouTubes and look for Sacramento WordPress meetup, uh, the, the last few meetings are now up there. Okay, so um, we we're going to talk about a couple things tonight. One, uh, I was going to talk a little bit about WebP support, which was added in. It's an image file format that was added into WordPress 5.8. And then also, uh, Aaron was going to do a little bit of a walkthrough of um, a recent project where he took a site that was done in Elementor and converted it over to Gutenberg. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Do I have permission to share screen? I don't yet. All right, hang on. Let me. Okay, try it now. Hey, I got it. There we go. I'm just going to do my desktop. That's the easiest thing to do. All right. Um, so let's see. Uh, I want to go and bring up my PowerPoint slides here. And go back to the very beginning. So, so in WordPress 5.8, which came out last month, so I think the 20th of July, WordPress 5.8, pretty big release uh, came out last month. And one of the features um, that was added in that I think is pretty cool is called WebP support. So WebP is an image format, okay? So it's a, an image file type. Um, and so five, with, now starting with 5.8, WordPress, uh, natively supports WebP. Okay, so a little background first. Um, where were we just before 5.8? So up through 5.7.2, the version right before that, uh, WordPress natively supported JPEG, PNG, and GIF uh, image formats. Okay, and so um, any others you tried to upload, it just wouldn't. It wouldn't without doing something like some plugins or changing some things in your theme by a child theme or something, um, you wouldn't be unable to upload anything other than JPEG, PNG, and GIF image files, okay? Um, so WebP has been uh, an image file format that has been supported in the, in the past, basically by, uh, by using plugins that would allow the upload of it into the, the uh, media library. So you've probably heard of some of those, Magify, ShortPixel, EWWW, I don't know how you say that. Ooh, <laughs> I think it's ooh. Um, so if you if you tried to directly upload a WebP image, you'd get a this file is not supported for security reasons. Um, I'm actually not sure if there's real security reasons or if that was just a, an error, a kind of a, a default error message that it gave you. But because I'm not familiar with any security issues with WebP, but that is the error that you'd get. Um, and then in, in 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 case anyone doesn't know. Just, it's just worth noting that, you know, the other very common type of image file format is an SVG, and that is not natively supported by WordPress. Um, it, it can be added in via plugins, okay? And so there is uh, an SVG support plugin, among others. There's actually one called SVG support. <laughs> um, that's not just a category of uh, types of... Um, uh, plugin. There's actually a plugin called SVG support. Okay, so and this is for security reasons. Okay, so that that has has always been that way, or at least been that way for a long time for security reasons. Okay, um, a little bit of history about WebP. So it is developed by Google. I, if, I, if I understand correctly, it was actually developed by another party, but then Google acquired it uh, sometime back though, like in 2010. So in 2010. They started talking about this format called WebP, and it took until 2018 to actually get to a 1.0 spec on, on WebP image uh, format. And the browser support is good for it. Um, so Google reported back in May on one of the Google websites where they talk about WebP, said that it was 90, 94%. Um, I checked on caniuse.com today and found that at 95.6, okay? And, um, and then I, I have a, um, a concern, okay? They, they're saying not, basically almost 96%, so I wouldn't mind hearing from you guys a little bit on this. Um, and that is that 
right now I'm on my newer Mac, my MacBook, but my old Mac um, actually has a problem with WebP. And that is because Safari is lagging. And Safari was, uh, support for WebP was added into Safari in Safari 14, which was released about a year ago. Okay. And it also requires that the user be using Mac OS Big Sur. Okay. So you need those two things. Uh, you need to be running Mac OS Big Sur and Safari 14. Right now, I think you're on 14.1. Okay. So while can I use this saying that it's almost 96%? Um, I scratch my head a little bit and say, yeah, but the, are there only that many, that few people that are really, um, you know, uh, running an older version of Safari? So, so how uh, can I hear from some of you guys about, is anybody out there using a Mac? And if so, are you using, are you running Big Sur? I haven't had any issues with Mac, but I do understand that I thought Internet Explorer wasn't really supporting WP or WebP, I'm sorry. Well, a WordPress dropped support for Internet Explorer in 5.8 also. Uh, okay, thanks. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know, there there would be that. There would be the, you know, you're right. It, it, it isn't. I mean, they're not going to do any updates. I, can, I can't imagine. You know, for at least a year now, probably a year and a half since they basically discontinued Internet Explorer. So, um, and, and WordPress said, in, in fact, it was in 5.8 concurrent with the WebP support. They also said, we're now no longer worried about Internet Explorer. <laughs> so, but is anybody using uh, an older version of uh, a Mac OS? I, I am. Uh, you are? I'm using uh, Catalina. Catalina, okay. I have a real old Mac, and I, I can't I, I can't upgrade to Big Sur now. That's what I have. My my desktop is um, um, can only go up through High Sierra, actually. <clears throat> so when I when I watch oh. when I if I serve a WebP image via a website, on and I look at it on that machine, it, the image doesn't come up mm. on that site. So that's uh, that's a little bit that makes me scratch my head a little bit. Of I'm still over. on Catalina too. I don't know why, but I just haven't upgraded. But I will. Uh huh. So okay. So there's that too. There's people who basically stay a year behind. You know, a lot of people stay a year behind on the Mac OS updates. It's not unusual. So, so, so just keep that in mind when it, when you should you decide to just use the native support um, for for WebP, okay. Cool. Uh, David, I have a question. Um, yep. I guess I don't know if I have seen websites with WebP. Do you have any examples? Because I've never used the for format ourselves. You know, I've seen them, like whenever I'm doing using the inspector, you know, just on sites in general, if I bring up a site and I think like, hey, that's cool how they do that, you know, and, and go into the inspector and look at something, I, I've seen it come up. Um, okay. I, I, I don't have a specific site to point you to where they're using WebP. Uh, good question though. Um, but, but, um, I, I have seen it in, in, even, even, even a while ago, even like a year ago. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have Mac, so we're on, we're on Big Sur. Yeah. I okay. don't know if I'm on Safari 14. I'm guessing I probably am. I don't know if you're on Big Sur. You know, I get curious though. Are you probably you are. Yeah, if you're on I Big have... Sur. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Are you saying if we up if we update our website to use WebP, does it have an impact on somebody that comes to our website? If, you talk about if their browser doesn't support it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. No. No doubt it does. Yeah. That's why I mention it. I mean, there can I use a saying? It's in the ninety five, ninety six percent range of support for it. So it's going to be a small number of people who are going to be unable to view it. Okay. So you're um, saying that the you're saying that the that a, a user if someone comes in has an older version of the browser, uh, doesn't support WebP. That you're saying that that the the WordPress servers don't serve up the image separately from being WebP, and don't they? If if you're using the native, you're using? if you're using the native support, I'm going to get to this in a second. Oh. I'm going to answer your question. Uh, okay. Here, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's what. There we go. 
Um, so why are the different file types? Uh, the JPEG, most of you probably know all this, this already, but a good choice for photos generally yields the best quality versus file size. Um, but the downside of JPEGs is that they don't offer any transparency, so you can't have a transparent background. PNGs usually are larger file size than a JPEG, but supports transparent backgrounds. So that's good to use for logos and illustrations where you want transparent backgrounds. And then GIFs are the lowest quality uh, of the three, but they can be animated. Okay. So, where's my cursor? Sorry, my. So why add the WebP support? Sorry, I can't figure out why my cursor just like isn't showing on the screen anywhere. Anyway, um, WebP files can be 25 to 34% smaller than an equivalent quality JPEG. So if you've, if you've run any Google PageSpeed Insights um, tests on, on um, um, on different sites to, to get the, the Google PageSpeed Insight score. You, you notice you'll, it's very common that it gives you then recommendations on how you can improve your page speed. And almost always it says serve images in next gen format. And it gives examples of those. And WebP is the first one it gives. So do you believe if, that page speed stuff? Well, that, what do you mean by that? <laughs> that well, sounds like I've, I run page speed every once in a while. And it says your site sucks. It's really slow. It's going to take 10 minutes before anything comes up. But in reality, it happens really if you go browse to that, put your website yourself on a private window, it comes up very quickly. It's obviously not the same speed that Google's claiming. So I don't know. Yeah. I was just curious to think the quality so, so the, there because you can go to GT Metrics and they used to use PageSpeed. They're not anymore. They use the Lighthouse, I think, or whatever it's called. But Light, well, yeah, Lighthouse is what like Google. Yeah, yeah, Lighthouse is what Google PageSpeed uses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got like a 99 on the on the on the scale on the light speed through gt metrics but if you run page speed insights from directly there it craps out it's kind of interesting you guys is curious but it what gives you a lower score it gives you a, well it gives you a terrible score and it's like it, it says your your time to uh action is really long and it's not so it's, well, it's i'm trying to figure out why the reason I the reason I mention it is because you know Google announced last fall, you know, in the end of last year that that page speed that the core web vitals were going to be a ranking factor. Originally, they had said that that would be by the spring of this year, and then as the spring approached, they said, well, by August or something. So <laughs> I haven't heard anything <laughs> since then. But basically, they're going to be using that score the core web vitals uh, um, that they get out of Lighthouse that they show on Google PageSpeed Insights. So that's the one that's gonna be the one that impacts your your um, page ranking. Well, yes. hopefully they're they're getting running the light speed like, like G2 metrics is and that like when you go straight to PageSpeed Insights, <laughs> so. I, I imagine the one that you get from Google is the one they're using, you know, I don't, I don't know that for sure, but but I, I would imagine that those yeah. numbers- That would that, make sense. Well, yeah, it yeah. does, but I'm just saying, see, I thought yeah. there were two separate tests. Interesting. The, the core web vitals are a subset of what you get in the report. So when you get the report from oh, okay. Google PageSpeed Insights, it gives you a handful of things like first contentful paint, largest contentful paint, yeah. time to first bite, all that stuff. When you look at those scores, there's, little, there's a little ribbon, like a little ribbon, like a prize ribbon, next to certain ones mm -hmm. of them. And those are the ones okay. that are in the core web vitals. Oh, okay. So the, those are the so ones that's that they, the that's the ones that they care most about. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and what, what I find with it is, is it's tough to get into the 90s with um, your mobile score. Not so hard to get on into the 90s on the desktop score because there's two scores. There's the, the mobile score and the desktop score. The mobile score is tough to get into the 90s. I mean, I can get it into the 80s yeah. and even into the low 90s, but. And that's uh, using optimizing plugins, right? What's that? And that would be using optimizing plugins, right? Because like, like you optimize your images, right? We're talking about that. So right. you can do really well on, on your desktop version 
of page speed insights, but not so well on mobile. Um, seems like WP would probably help that score primarily. Yep. yep. Um, not so much as your desktop. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it'll help both. I don't know. Um, you know I mean, you can get 90 pretty easy with a free plugin, right? optimizing and yeah. your images but like you said that mobile score is pretty rough yeah especially if you're using like a page builder or anything that's gonna right. slow that down yeah. yeah 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 so um so i i think that uh you know as far as why it's been added into 5.8 you know my guess and is that with the importance of core web vitals you know it prompted you know the wordpress developed development community to look at, you know, ways of getting the best scores possible, you know, and, and WebP is one of them, right? Um, and so um, this, and the other thing about WebP is the small file size. So you can get file sizes that are actually smaller than JPEG and they have transparent, the option of transparent backgrounds, which is a cool feature. Cause if you needed something with a transparent background, PNG is the, really the only option currently natively in WordPress. And so to have the transparency in a smaller file size is, is pretty good, pretty cool. I learned, I just learned that last bullet today and that WebPs can be animated also. So like that makes it basically makes them uh, have all the features of a GIF also. <laughs> but the big, the, big, the big thing is the, um, uh, the page speed, okay. Um, so the options here, well, option one will be upload the, the WebP files to the media library directly. So the pro there is that there's no plugins required with now with five with WordPress 5.8. On the downside, be aware that users with older versions of Safari and Mac OS um, will no longer be able to will not be served the images. You'll need Safari 14 or Mac OS and Mac OS Big Sur, uh, but then on the other hand, can I use indicates 95.6% of people will be okay. I'm a little skeptical of that. That's why I asked about that because I think if, if the, it, we've already got a couple people on this call who are not on, who are on Max, who are not on Big Sur. So that's a little bit of a concern. Um, and then, then you have to generate the, the WebP images yourself, which might be some extra work. Okay, so to generate the, the, the images, Photoshop currently does not natively export WebP. Okay, um, however, there's a plugin that actually was developed by Google called WebP Shop that adds the support. So if you look up WebP Shop, you just, just Google that, you'll get the page where you can download it. And there is a PC version and a Mac OS version um, of, of that plugin for uh, Adobe. Photoshop, okay? And then there's all the online tools that can convert JPEGs um, into WebP. So there's a, a list of a handful of them here, online convert, cloud convert. Uh, the one that I really like is this one called easygif.com. Um, I mentioned Optimizilla in here. It does not actually do a conversion to WebP, but it's a really effective uh, uh, tool for compressing JPEGs. And sometimes it's helpful to take the JPEG and compress it and then convert it into a, into a, uh, a WebP. I found some sometimes better results with doing that, okay? Um, so that's why I mentioned that one there. But easy uh, GIF is gonna be the one that I'm gonna uh, show here, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And um, so easygif.com. Okay, and so what you would do here would be take a, um, I've got a, um, sorry, I've got a uh, file I'm gonna try and look at here. That is a JPEG on my desktop here. So this JPEG here, uh, I'm gonna bring this up here. It's a pretty sizable JPEG. This is 707 kilobytes, pretty darn big. I mean, this, image could certainly be optimized down to 150 easily without losing any quality uh, is my guess okay on this so but just to see what our starting point is we're starting with a very large uh jpeg file here okay and if we go to this site here um this uh easy 
uh, gif.com, you'll see this WebP over here on the side. Okay, so if I go there, um, I'm going to do the JPEG to WebP. So there, there's a, here's here's how I learned that that WebPs can be animated because they have an, ed, an animated WebP maker. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go JPEG to, to WebP, okay, and then I'm going to choose a file here and just go and grab that one off of my desktop, which is this one. So this is 700k. Okay, and you can see it there, it's, they're saying it's 690K. Um, and before I convert it into WebP, what I'm gonna do here is go to optimize. And you can set some settings here. Um, it's set for 80% image quality factor. I usually bump that down to about 60 and then optimize the image and then you see the image looks, and I know it's tough to see through Zoom, but on, on my end here, looking at it right on my screen, that looks just as good. I can't tell those two images apart. And that actually got it down to 74K. So it went from 700K to 74K, okay? And then I go on the, this button down here, the two WebP, and that goes to the WebP converter, takes that one that we've taken down to 74K. And if we convert that to WebP, that brings that down to 32K. That's a pretty nice drop in size. That's a really good drop in size. So, so David, so to, it, to take out the extra step, what if you just did the first JPEG, the bigger one, the WebP? Uh, let's see what happens there. Let's go back there and WebP. I'm gonna just go back here and go. I'm just curious. I like to save work if I can. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I I'm pretty sure I tried this this afternoon, <laughs> and so let's just go get that and upload it. Sorry, it's pretty fast. I have. Oh, I'm in the anim. Sorry, I'm in the wrong place here. Go back to WebP. This is the animated. I clicked on JPEG to WebP, but we're at. Yeah. So there we are. Okay, choose the file, boom. What is going on? Oh, there it goes, okay. So there's our 700K file. And if we just convert that straight to WebP, we got it down to 245. By taking that extra step, instead of 245K, we got it down to 38. So that seems like that was worth the extra, you know, 20 seconds. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's good to see the difference. So thank you. Thank you for humoring me. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. That's what we're here for just to have a little fun with all these things. Okay, so so that's a good way to, to, to do it. I mean, uh, th this tool I find pretty easy to use. Um, I, I, looking at the others that I listed on the the chart there. I, I listed them because I see them a lot. They come up a lot on some videos that I've been watching. Um, this one, I think, is the easiest to do. Optimize it. Take your JPEG, upload it, optimize it, get it down to, you know, I, and I set that quality thing at 60%. It defaulted to 80. So I bumped it down to 60% and still couldn't tell any difference on this. So we might have even been able to go a little farther. It's possible, you know. Um, Okay, so um, moving back into the um, presentation here. Okay, so now going on here, um, the other option is to use a plugin. Okay, and there's a bunch of plugins that optimize images, and you've probably heard of many of them, and can do the WebP conversion. Okay, um, and they, these things will serve WebP images for optimal page speed when the browser supports it, and they'll 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 serve the JPEG and PNGs when it does not. So this is getting back to Mark's question there about whether you know or how can you get it to serve whatever's optimal, right? So um, these plugins uh, will serve WebP whenever it's supported by the browser and not when it's not. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that Safari or Mac OS or any other older browsers. Okay, 
So um, some of the popular plugins here, there's the U plugin. Uh, there's Imagify, Short Pixel, and, and there's a whole bunch of others. There's Smush and, and so on. Um, the EWWW one is the one that I actually looked at here. Oops. Oh, we're done there. Okay, let's go back here. So I uploaded that. Um, it's hard working on this notebook with the Zoom toolbar up above everything here. It's in the way all the time. So um, here's the image that we worked on before that that I that I that pre I, I I took this image and compressed it just through another tool online. I think I, I probably used OptiMozilla to compress it from the 707k. It's 114. Okay, so what I uploaded was 114k, but the um, EWWW image optimizer is set here for, see it says WebP conversion right here. So I have that checked. So it will convert images to next gen format for supported browsers while retaining the originals for other browsers. Um, and WebP images will be generated automatically for new uploads. And so when I went and uploaded that image, oops, when I uploaded this image, I had that plugin already plugged, uh, installed and, and activated. It won't, if you, if you install this uh, plugin and you've got a whole pile of images in your media library, it won't go and do them, at least not in the free version, okay? It won't go backwards and, and uh, optimize them. So when I, when I bring up- question quick? Yep. Uh, just to reiterate, so that will serve a JPEG file when you can't serve a WP file. That's right. A, web, a WebP file. Excuse That's me. right. Thank That's you. right. Yeah. So on on this particular machine that I'm on, I have uh, you know uh, uh, Safari uh, 14, and uh, when I uh, load that page, this is the image right here. I just stuck that onto a page here. If I take that image, grab it, pull it over here, you'll see that it's a WebP. So it's a WebP image. Sorry. There's this thing here, I can't. I'm gonna get that out of the way. There we go. And so it's a WebP image and it's 38K. Remember, it was 100 and what was it, 114 in the media library? Yeah, 114 in the media library. Um, in the, uh, what got served is a 38K image. Now, if I brought up that site, this site, this page on my other Mac that does not have the current version of uh, um, Safari, it would come up at 114K JPEG file. So yeah, it would serve the, the other form, file format. So, so um, I have a question. So you talked mm -hmm. about Safari on Macs. I would assume the Safari on all the iPhones is probably supports WebP or do they have any limitations with phones? Well, let's go take a look at, I think it's actually better to be honest with you. Let me take a look at, um, can I use, there we go. Um, and so on Safari on iOS, it's in 14.4. And it's in 14.7. So it looks like it's better. See on, on Safari, which is the desktop Safari. Can you see my cursor and everything here? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So see, see how it's not totally green. It's got that like kind of like an olive green color about it versus yeah. green means it's fully supported. That olive green says oh, oh, kind okay. of. Okay. And so Partially. it says here on Safari for desktop, um, there's a note that says partial support in Safari refers to being limited to Mac OS 11, Big Sur and later. Whereas if you look at Safari on iOS, it just says supported since 14.4. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm not as worried about that one as, as I am of the, the desktop because that tends to get updated automatically for many people. Yeah, people usually don't have a choice. Yeah, they usually push it to the next version at some point, <laughs> you know, so you don't find people using like really old versions of Safari, whereas on the desktop, you kind of do. So this is the this is the concern. This little column right in here where it says it's got to be, you know, um, Safari 14. 
but you know, you can always use these plugins and this, I am using the free version of this uh, EWWW plugin and um, it's doing a pretty good job of compressing too. It's doing a pretty good job. I mean, getting it down to 38 uh, K we had gotten it a little bit smaller than that. Didn't we, when we did it with the, um, what did we get it down to 34 or something? What did we get it down to? Oh, no, same 38. No, 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 that's the one that we extracted from the page. Where's the one that we- I think it was 34. So it was, yeah, yeah, because I, I think we didn't download it. <laughs> we just left it up there. It was, I think it was 34. So a little bit better from that, but I mean, they're pretty close, you know? So um, so that's that's pretty cool. You know, I, uh, you know it, it might take a year or so before we uh, don't care about those older versions of, of Safari, but- uh, you do always have those plugins available. You know, I am using the free version of that EWWW. So, um, so that's what I got. Any more questions, guys? Um, so what would you do if you had a bunch of images already on your site and you wanted to use like the plugin? Mm -hmm. I guess you have to go in and do them individually. Yeah, I, I think you'd have to go and, and load them up, honestly. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. You'd have um, to, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, there's sites that have a lot of images, so you might not want to do that. But but if you got a, you know, a site that's got 20 images, maybe. There, there is a bulk optimizer, but I believe you pay for it. I yeah. didn't look into it real in, in a lot of detail, but I believe uh it might cost you something they might charge you per image or something to that effect were you gonna say something Aaron? uh yeah the image uh, imagify plugin uh we actually use that for work and uh you can mass convert images uh to webp now i think that we might pay for the service so yeah I don't know if that comes uh, free, but it 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 does allow you to uh, do mass conversion. If I'm not mistaken, um, they charge they they give you Imagify gives you 25 megabytes of of images that they'll convert over to WebP for free per month. So that, that's a decent amount for free, yeah. actually. That's a pretty good 25 uh, megabytes of images for free. That's pretty good. Short pixel gives you a hundred images per month. Yeah. So. All right, everybody. <laughs> Hello, if I, can I say something just real quick? I know I joined on late. No, um, you're okay, okay. Oh, yeah, um, oh, 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 so, so I, know, uh, I think you were asking about the plugin. And I just wanted to recommend, um, if you guys aren't familiar with a company called AppSumo. Uh -huh. uh, so AppSumo, they sell basically, a lot of these companies are selling, uh, you know, they, they bill monthly. Um, and AppSumo has what they call lifetime deals. So you only pay once. And right now they have uh, EWWW Image Optimizer. And I believe it's $49. And then you get it lifetime. You don't have to pay monthly. And now, that, now you could... Uh, there are higher levels that you could pay for. It gives you more features, more, uh, more amount of traffic. You could run through it, more sites. But for somebody that just has one site, the $49 is something they'd only have to pay for one time. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, I, I, now that you say that, I think it, I, I've been looking at some of these tutorials on YouTube on the EWWW. And I think that one, that actually came up. There's a video from a couple months ago where the guy mentioned that deal, I, I think. Yeah. So thanks for mentioning. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Good. Good one. So, all right. And I'll, then, then I will turn it over to Aaron, who will talk a little bit about um, an Elementor to Gutenberg project that he did recently. There we go. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay. All right. So um, basically, uh, let me hide one of these. Uh, let's see it. 
There we go. So, Are we still uh, sharing my screen? Oh, I think I need to turn that off. All right, let me. Uh, Are you seeing my screen now? No, I think I need to turn mine off somehow. How do I do that? <laughs> oh, stop share. How about, how about the red the red button that says stop share? Oh, okay. There we go. Now we're All looking right. at you. Ah, here we go. All right. <laughs> okay, so um, I had um, I I had. Uh, a, a client that I originally uh, designed their site uh, using the Elementor plugin, and uh, it's a, it's a pretty small one. There's nothing really uh, fancy about it. It's got a couple of icons and some imagery and some uh, parallax scrolling. And uh, what happened was I made this like several years ago, and uh, my Elementor um, Plugin came. Uh, I was getting the premium, like the super duper premium package, and I just decided I didn't want to pay for it anymore. And I, I, so I talked with the client to see, hey, uh, would it be okay if I, I may converted this uh, just to make it some minor tweaks, and uh, they were okay with it. And so, um, what I wound up doing was. Uh, converting it uh, to uh, converting the Elementor uh, elements or blocks uh, to just the standard uh, Gutenberg blocks. So I wanted to show you kind of how that worked. Um, here on the left, I've got the original Elementor site and uh, you can notice that uh, as I scroll down, there's some parallax scrolling and some icons and stuff. Uh, over here on the right is the uh, is the the Gutenberg version, and there's some similarities. Uh, one of the things is I've removed the attend to con uh, attend to concert uh, button, but uh, that's not because the buttons aren't available. That's because they're they're because of COVID, they're not actually having any concerts right now. So I just wanted to uh, remove that and I'll, I'll put that back later. Um, it doesn't have uh, the parallax effects and I'll, I'll show you kind of why that is uh, because uh, using uh, the Gutenberg blocks out, just the, the ones that ship with WordPress, um, you're somewhat limited, uh, some other Plugins like uh, Cadence and Stackable, they come with some some better uh, parallax capabilities. But I just wanted to make this really simple. Uh, it it wasn't uh, you know it wasn't anything that that I needed to spend a whole lot of time on. Um, let me get to a page. Yeah, you can see there's no upcoming events. That's why I wanted to remove that. So here's an example of uh, a button and it's showing, um, I actually need to make a little fix here, but the, the button pretty much uh, looked the same and, and everything. So over here on the uh, Elementor side, I'm gonna edit the page so you can kind of see uh, what, it, what it looks like. And this is kind of the, the thing that unfortunately you have to deal with when you're dealing with page builders is that usually they have an, an a, a UI built on top of of the WordPress uh, page editor. Um, it, like Beaver Builder has this, uh, Elementor has this, and uh, uh, Divi and a couple of other ones. So if you just try to edit the page, you'll be presented with something like this. We'll say edit with Elementor. So I'll click that. It's then going to load the Elementor uh, UI, and then I'll be able to kind of see uh, see what's going on here. So um, one real cool tool in Elementor um, is uh, that you can navigate the 
you can kind of see an overall navigation of how everything is built uh, over here in the navigator. So I can see, okay, this is the top section and then we got a column. And if I click that open, I can see, okay, the heading, hex editor and, and button and so forth. And then uh, down here, you see this Renew Elementor Pro. Uh, that was the thing that I didn't want to have to do anymore. Um, so what I basically did was I um, opened up the, the site, uh, opened up the page, and then uh, rebuilt uh, each page uh, from scratch using Gutenberg Plot. So I'm going to... Uh, over here on the right, edit the page so you can kind of see uh, what that looks like. I'm using the same theme for both of these. The theme did not change at all. It's uh, using Nebi, that's N-E-B-E, -E, um, which uh, has some customization options, which are pretty nice. Minimize this, I don't a little bit more and, and just the out of the box gutenberg blocks yes this is just out of wow. the box uh there you know if i was using something like uh, cadence or like if i really wanted to have the icons i would probably use the cadence blocks um just as an add-on but i decided to just get rid of this this uh, section like where it says how to attend a, a performance mostly because it's like we we're not having any uh, performances right now so kind of don't want to call attention to that um uh but yeah these are these are uh these are just your the, the basic blocks that ship with wordpress um so in uh in elementor there's the Navigate navigator that's uh, over here that you can kind of drag around place. The closest equivalent to that in uh, the block editor is the list view, which if you click that open, it will allow you to see kind of how everything is structured. So over on the left, you've got we've got uh, these different sections. Um, on the right, uh, it's kind of broken up into sections, but you know something like a cover. I don't think needs to be. Uh, you got a cover block, and then you got a group which makes up this area down here, and then another uh, cover block. And then it was just a a matter of um, putting putting uh, the the page together uh, using uh, what I knew would work as an equivalent. So over here on the left in Elementor, I I think the way that this uh, let me click the right section. You have a lot, a lot of customization here, and there's uh, so here you you can pick a an image, and then you can have uh, uh, scrolling effects, which basically gives you kind of that parallax view. I don't know if you can see it, but if I scroll the screen, you can kind of see that it's moving uh, a little bit. Um, in um, uh, using the Gutenberg blocks, it's a little bit different. You're somewhat limited. Uh, the only option you've got is uh, for the background to be pretty much static, or you can select this to uh, make the background fixed. But as you notice, it's gotten a lot bigger. Let me show you what that looks like. So all that does is it basically blows up the image and and locks it in place. It doesn't real. It's not really a parallax um, type effect, and that's why I didn't uh, have that on. But I can, you know, like set where I want the focus to be, um, uh, depending on the the size of the image, um, and then 
Uh, building this was pretty much uh, just a matter of uh, reassembling uh, the things, you know, like a, not down here, okay, I've got a, a section with a column and it's got headings and then intersection and and then I've got this uh, this image and it's something like when you, you know, you can kind of see the patterns that are happening. And so down here, um, all I did like to achieve this rounded effect is that uh, the it, the standard image block uh, comes with uh, two styles. You can have a default, which is basically the default hard edges, or you can have it rounded. Um, if uh, you know if the image is not exactly uh, a square ratio, then you'll kind of have uh, this oblong effect where the edges will be rounded, but it, it might have a, a side that is, let me see what happens now, that doesn't do it. Um, it'll have a side that's a little bit flat, as you can see kind of over here. And then um, if I wanted to, it underneath this section, if I wanted to like match what what this looks like, where I have a, a button that says uh, attend concert. Um, I could add that right in there. I can type in uh, button and then uh, attend concert. Oh, um, the re normally when you're um, editing with blocks, you'll see a toolbar uh, just above the block that you're working on. But I had this option open, which is the top toolbar. I find that having that on sometimes is helpful if you're trying to isolate a, a block and and modify it when you know sometimes the controls are are giving you some trouble. So I'm going to turn this off now. I can see. Uh, where it is. Oops. All right, there we go. Okay, so then uh, change, set the link to, um, well, in this case, it would actually be uh, events. So that would take you to the calendar page. And then I can um, change the alignment. And this is one of those uh, Gutenberg bugs that I've noticed is that, okay, I've changed this so that these buttons should be justified in the center, but it's not until I step out of that, that buttons block that it will actually uh, show that happening. And then over here, I've got uh, several options. And these are not options, uh, different uh, button styles. And this is actually set by the theme itself. And so in this case, uh, the way Nebby works, the Nebby theme works is that it gives you a, a primary and secondary color. So in this case, I'm going to pick primary. And then, um, yeah, that's a that's about it uh, for for that block. So it's just, just basically uh, some columns with uh, uh, some headings and text and, and stuff like that. Then moving down, this was uh, this was a section that was a little bit uh, more complicated. Um, when I originally designed the site, I designed it using Adobe XD, which uh, is a really cool uh, prototyping um, uh, tool or, or tool used for uh, web mockups. And so I had this thing where you had a parallax effect and then you had uh, this thing, uh, uh, some content split in the middle with this white overlay. Uh, what I decided to do was just simplify it. So I just have a a cover block. Let's see if I can select it. There it is. 
There we go. I have a cover block, and in order to make this space that I had up here, I've inserted a spacer block, and then followed by a paragraph and and uh, three columns. And so that is how I uh, com converted these, and and um, it took me. I want to say it took me about two hours to complete it, but the nice thing about it is that after that was done, I was able to just uh, disable uh, the Elementor plugins. Um, I was also able to disable some other plugins. It basically, you know, just trying to the trying to get it so that uh, we weren't having to pay for anything extra anymore. Um, get uh, everybody's image back up and then the rest of the rest of the pages were pretty much the same you know you got it, it, it's one of those things where it kind of becomes a you, you start seeing the patterns and and you're able to just kind of rebuild it really quickly um, if you if you've been using the block editor a lot and, and in my case I was able to do that pretty quickly well, I've got everybody on here. I'm actually going to fix this button issue. So I have a question for you. Um, yeah. So I use Elementor. I use the free because I'm cheap. Um, I have used Gutenberg in the past because obviously it's awesome if you're just trying to build a really quick site. Um, and of course, it affects load speed. So that's great. What I didn't really like about Gutenberg was the kind of the, the UI or the workflow. It seems to me to be clunky and not so great optionally you know like when you're really when you're trying to create something that looks really good does that make sense yeah yeah that's a, that's a legitimate um complaint um yeah i mean like i was just showing you about how the, the interface sometimes um doesn't it 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 it's definitely like for example elementor over here on the left pretty much looks exactly like what you're going to see um whereas in, with the gutenberg blocks it's about uh, it depends on the on the theme like it can be about i would say 95 to 98 percent if you got like a a theme that's that's done a very good job of supporting Gutenberg blocks, but then there are some themes that uh, it's absolutely horrible. Uh, like what you're editing on the back end doesn't look at all like what's going to appear on the front end, and so that's a that's a legitimate concern. Uh, the yeah. main thing that I wanted to do though was to basically be able to get them off of that because in their case they didn't really need uh anything extra they didn't they didn't need to be paying for anything extra um it was, and so this is kind of a, a solution and yeah so, so can i add on to that a little bit yeah um ethan when was the last time you used uh gutenberg so it's funny that you asked that because I was like, you know what, I really should just embrace Gutenberg. I've used it like just kind of make a faux like blog site. But recently I was looking at like my own portfolio site and I was like, you know what, it'd be really cool to, it's my site's pretty simple. So just rebuild it in an editor block. But um, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, that's fine. But, you know, to me, it's, it's just a, you have to learn a different thing and workflow, maybe have a second screen so you can refresh and kind of see what that looks like elementor you know um is free so if right. you're not worried about page speed load i just like the ui more like or you know you're toggling right to full screen or you can in, you know look at um what it looks like responsively in you know mobile or a pad and make some kind of tweaks there I just I want to embrace Gutenberg because it's free. It's part of the, the core part of of WordPress, but just the workflow kind of I don't know. I get frustrated, and as as a yeah. 
as a new developer or somebody who's just trying to, you know, just design something and, and feel confident about it, the, the clunkiness is always kind of sends me away. Yeah. So, so, so I, I think, um, I, I think that is entirely valid. Everything you just said there, um, you know, uh, I would give it, you know, I mean, you get a, with Elementor, you do get a really WYSIWYG look at things. Okay. It's, you, you are going to get on the front end what you're seeing there for the most part. I mean, I would give that like a 98%. Uh, I, I, I would be a little less generous than Aaron on the Gutenberg thing. And I would probably say it's 80 to 90% <laughs> of what you're going to see on the front end. Cause there are, it rarely looks exactly like it, you know, um, and um, it has gotten a lot better over the years. You know, it's been, you know, coming up on three years, coming up on three years with it. Um, it has gotten better. It's taken way too long. I mean, why, why, <laughs> why is there still that bug that Aaron showed with the button where like, it doesn't center it until he moves out of that. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that kind of stuff is, uh, it is quite honestly is still, it was a lot worse before couple years ago that was a lot worse it's still there's still some weird stuff like i actually want to file a bug with the image block for example there's an image block right that's part of the core and there's times when like it gives you handles for resizing the image for dragging the image and you know widening it or or changing the size of it, it gives you these handles and if you do it if you do enough for the right sequence of clicks those those handles like go away like, I don't, I don't know why. And then I have to, okay, forget it. Delete the block, start it over again. You know I mean? I, I, you know, there's, there's some weird stuff in there that you go, why is it like, this is crazy. That the yeah. clunkiness and the, the quality of it is at times not that good. Um, but uh, it has gotten a lot better. And then, and then if you use a lot of the block add-ons, so I particularly like uh, Cadence blocks. I think Aaron mentioned Cadence blocks. There's a whole bunch of block add-ons. There's stackable. There's GitWid. There's um, a whole bunch. Ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. There's tons yeah. of of block add-ons that. And that's where I found really... Gutenberg to shine is like. Yeah. Using those add-ons, but then it's like you're putting all this weight on your on your site, and the whole point was to to be really weightless, right? Like. And... Yeah. Uh, those things can be pretty darn fast though. There's still the, the still a Gutenberg site with like the cadence blocks is still going to be the fastest thing around or, or the generate blocks with the generate press uh, theme is still, those are still going to be your fastest stuff out there. I think. Uh, and, and, and in recent, in, 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 in the last few weeks, you know, everybody's been uh, this year, everybody's been obsessed with page speed because of Google's announcement that page speed would be a ranking factor right late, late last year so everybody's been obsessed with page speed and so the, the the gutenberg blocks tended to come out of the gate pretty fast already and then everybody was going oh this elementary is not that fast or beaver builder is not that fast or whatever all those other ones the more visual page builders it, it recently though some of them are doing updates where there's considerable page speed improvements so I don't know. I don't, it depends on when, you know, how fast does Elementor get it to be, you know? Um, I haven't seen any big page speed things out of Elementor, but like Divi did a, a big release recently where they're claiming to get into the 90s, high 90s, 99 and 100 on mobile, on Google Page Speed Insights. On Divi. Yeah, Elementor seems like, for me, it's it's mobile that I've been struggling with for yeah. speed optimization. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I rambled for a while there, but but I think Gutenberg really shines with the add-ons, and I, and I think it's pretty impressive that Aaron did this whole page without any block add-ons. That's pretty yeah, good. absolutely. I mean, it's it's inspiring for sure. Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, but but as far as like the kind of controls that you get, you know, on that left side of of Elementor there, where you get, you know padding and margin and max widths and all the typography controls and love, you know, all so on. Right. Yeah. Those block extensions give you a lot of that stuff. I mean, pretty much on par with, with, with at least with free Elementor. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think one thing is that, um, um, the, 
the Gutenberg is definitely an improvement if you are in if you're blogging because it makes I I, I would never want to have to create uh, like blog posts using Elementor. I know that you can, uh, but it just seems like that would take far too long versus, you know, like if you're creating a nice, uh, uh, a nice landing page or something, then yeah, put in the extra effort for, uh, you know, having some more uh, fine tuned controls. But uh, I think the, I think the Gutenberg box is definitely a, uh, a plus if you're if you're just doing uh, blogging or or creating content on a on a regular basis like that. Uh, the other thing is that, uh, like you said, with the additional blocks, it, they definitely give you some more control, and it does look more in the back end like what it's supposed to look like in the front end. Yeah. Whereas some of the ones that that come with uh, the, the ones that ship with WordPress, uh, some of them are really well done and some of them are just still awful, I think. Um, yeah. And uh, I think uh, the, uh, yeah, page fees was a, a concern um, because uh, I know that the, uh, you know, the page builders have been improving that, but uh, there's, it's very easy to screw things up um, using the page builders. I, I've noticed. Like sometimes, what you have is somebody will come in and make some tiny little changes to uh, one element in here. You know, for example, like I can go in here and uh, change. Now, if I can get it to load, uh, there we go. Uh, ch you know, change it to some some weird font like that, and then publish it. And then I've got this kind of strange thing. Whereas I I like actually having uh, I prefer to have have the uh, style to be pretty much controlled by CSS and not 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 allow the these kind of one off. Uh, things where people can change the typography and and stuff like that that's basically because i i want to keep things consistent um but that's that's also risk now you can do that you can have that happen though uh with the uh, block editor as well you can you can make kind of these one-off changes and especially with the block extensions right yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah you know, the other thing is you can you can kind of have uh, the best of both there. You can do your main pages in Elementor. And I think Gutenberg is great for blogging because you just type. Yeah. You just type and type. And when you, every time you hit return, it creates a new paragraph tag. Uh, if you wanted to head it, put in a heading, you put slash H. You know, and Gutenberg has a few shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts and stuff in it that are actually really cool. Like you can always put in a heading if you type slash H E A. As soon as you start typing the slash H E A before you even fi finish the word heading, it gives you that option. You just hit return and you got a heading block, you know, and hit, put your headings in, hit return. Now you're writing a paragraph. Yeah. You want to put in an image slash I am, you know, as soon as you start typing image, it gives you that as an option. You hit return and you got an image block and you can select an image. So you could always do your blog posts with just those pages don't turn on elementor edit with the default editor don't edit with elementor and then those blog pages are in are done in gutenberg and then your main pages are done in elementor so well thanks for the tips i have to go i'll be back next month you guys are awesome cool cool where, where are you in the sac area here Ethan? uh nevada county so um okay. and i do a um a word development meetup through um the Economic Resource Council of Nevada County, we do um, a monthly kind of web development. So I've, I've been focused on WordPress. I got kind of tuned into you guys a while ago with um, SAC WordCamp. And then oh, yeah. so right on. I'll be trying to tune in and network with you guys. I do some talks, but I, I'm not quite ready to have the bandwidth here, but I'll, I'll keep that in mind. 
Cool. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Ethan. Yeah. I'm going to have to drop off too. My day gets started pretty early tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, thanks for, for having on. me. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. See you later. Well, that's Did you about have any a, more there, Aaron? No, or? that that was about it. Um, I think it might be good. <laughs> what might be a good survey is uh, what do you hate most about G Gutenberg? Because <laughs> um, <laughs> that their plugin still has like only two stars, I think, at the most, and that that's uh. Of course, that's for the bleeding edge uh, changes right. and right where you have to deal with stuff that looks completely broken. <laughs> right. Can I can I answer that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate the clunkiness stuff. You know, like 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 you pointed out that it, it is embarrassing that there's that bug that you had that, that the button didn't center itself until you clicked out. Yeah, right. let, me, let me show you something that, that and, I... And the, I'm telling you, the image block is, is, has got some problems. I mean, and I go, I, how could this be three years in? Yeah. I mean, that, that annoys me. Now, on the plus side, can I add one plus side to Gutenberg or something that's coming? Yeah. Um, you know how there's the block navigator there on the left side you got on your screen there, uh -huh. right? Okay. In the next version, so if you use the Gutenberg plugin, which gives you the new features that are coming. So if you use the Gutenberg plugin, it gives you the beta features that are going to be in the next release. Yeah. Right. And what's one of the things going to be in there, you're going to be able to drag, grab blocks inside of that navigator and move them around. Mm -hmm. well, this is very cool. Yes, because that's that's one of the things I was actually about to show that because oh uh, sorry no 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 that that uh, because that's one of the nice things about uh, Elementor. So for example, I've got these you know different sections, and if I want to move rearrange them, I just drag it like this, and then boom. Now that you know that kind of ugly, weird, but. Uh, but you, you can see, you know, what happened there versus over here in, in Gutenberg. You can select the blocks. But if you hold the button down and, you know, you would be thinking that, oh, yeah, this is going to happen. It's like, no, nothing, nothing's going to happen. You're still stuck having to control it uh, using uh, these uh, little toggle. Uh, right. Uh, buttons, which is handy. I mean, it does work. Uh, another thing I notice is that you move stuff around here and the list view doesn't seem to refresh. You have to like click off of it and wait a few seconds. Ah, or there we go. Click, yeah, or, or uh, click the list view again or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. I find myself doing that uh, a lot of time. And then another thing that is nice uh, about the this uh, Elementor Navigator is that like I could right click and uh, delete something versus let, let me show you something that has happened. Well, I don't want to do this on a production site, <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Um, Something that that has happened is that like a, a little paragraph, uh, as you can see down here, there's a paragraph block that is nested uh, in here. Now, how do I get rid of it? Now, you I click could, on it in backspace. Yeah, I probably I could backspace, but I've noticed that sometimes see. It looks like it didn't get rid of it. Now, maybe yeah. maybe it did. Let me turn list view and turn it back on. OK, it did get rid of it. But um, this is where I was having to uh, go back and, and turn the top toolbar on, because then I could actually uh, delete the block um, when 
sometimes when you you have a box selected, sometimes this toolbar won't show up. Like if, if the block is empty, I've noticed that that sometimes happens. Yep. Or so when for you example, click... like I've, I've clicked right here, but there's no toolbar. The toolbar is not going to show up until I actually enter some content. And that can be kind of, uh, you know, confusing, if I think so. The okay. other thing is if you copy and paste a block, yeah, you have to insert a paragraph block and then go into that paragraph and then paste. Yeah. That's weird. Like many people won't figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> now, one thing I do like about Gutenberg is the, uh, the ease of copying and pasting content. I think that's extremely... It's extremely fast. Um, like something I didn't show on here was that what I would what I was doing when I was creating these pages, I I couldn't I didn't want to um, erase what I had what I had open. Let me just do a little moving around here. What I had open was. Uh, on one tab, I'd have the Elementor side, and then on the other, and then what I would do is I would create a brand new page um, just for creating the blocks, and then I copied the content, went back to the Elementor uh, page, converted it back into uh, the uh, the standard WordPress editor, and then pasted the Gutenberg box in there. That way, I wasn't having some weird thing because it, it, if you have a, an Elementor page and you convert it to you, you, you edit it using the standard uh, WordPress editor, you'll get a warning. I can actually just show you uh, what that looks like. Okay, so if I try to click this and say back to a WordPress editor, I said, please note you're going to, you know, their current layout might break. I hit continue. Now, note I have not saved or updated anything, but it says down here in the corner that the page has actually been updated. So, if I go to preview it, now you can see that the page is pretty much broken. Or, well, it's not broken, but it's definitely not showing up the way it was supposed to. Right. Um, and that's, that's what I didn't want to have that happen. So what I did was I made sure that uh, in Gutenberg, every, all the blocks looked, you know, pretty much the way they should. And then I used the... Uh, this command right here where it says copy all content right and then i can actually just show you how this works let me just delete this box paste it in place okay it's giving me some sort of junk it's probably because uh this this local backup is is kind of out of date um so that's where the revisions come in handy. Who here knows about revisions? <laughs> All right, I don't want to bore everybody to death. I'm just going to back this up to. There we go. Now it's back in the Elementor editor and, and looks uh, correct. Um, but yeah, there was a notice. I, I, I noticed a uh, alert saying, you know, need to upgrade to WordPress uh, 5.8. And that's probably why it was giving me that error message. So, so yeah, that's about right. it for uh, Gutenberg, at least it's from my end.
All right, everybody. Thanks for jumping on tonight. Anybody else have anything, any questions they wanted to uh, ask or um, anything WordPress related, really? Thank you, guys. Those were You're both welcome. really great. Good, good, good. Yeah, glad really you enjoyed that. Glad if you got some value out of that. Yes. So, so. very you. good. Nice to see uh, your design, Aaron. Beautiful. Oh, good job. Yeah, and and really cool that it was done with the with the core blocks. Yeah, I think I that's like really, that. I think that's re actually a really good testament to the core blocks. Yep, I'm going to yeah. do that. Yep, yep. So. Excellent. Thank so. you, guys. All right, I'm going to drop you. off to. Thank you. See, Thank you, see guys. you guys. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Mm-hmm.